things. We knew their ahid, their pact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they renew their allegiance to the Muslim Ummah to uphold the principles of Tawheed and to worship Allah as he ought to be worshipped. It is in this conference, brothers and sisters, that the Muslims go through the various rituals of Hajj. These rituals that are symbolic of what the Muslims ought to do and how the Muslims ought to behave. In Surah Al-Hajj, brothers and sisters, the Surah which is entitled Pilgrimage. This Surah which talks about Hajj teaches us how a Muslim society should be. It begins, the very beginning of the Surah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum inna zalzalat al-sa'ati shay'un azim. O people, fear your Lord for the convulsions of the hour of judgment are of a momentous nature. The Surah, first of all, tries to bring man to faith, bring man to Islam. It constructs within him this faith, and then it goes on teaching him what he should do. And the Surah details the ceremonies of Hajj, of piety, of Tawheed, of reliance upon Allah, of resisting evil. And in the Surah itself, there, there are ayat speaking of jihad. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ Permission has been given to those against whom war has been waged or against whom who have been battled and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of giving them victory. And in the end of this surah of the surah of Hajj, towards the end Allah says, Wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihada. Wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihada. Meaning that strive in the cause of Allah. Wage jihad in the cause of Allah as a jihad due to Allah or as you ought to wage jihad. Jihad and hajj are connected, brothers and sisters. Not only in the physical sense that we go there and we make hajj and we travel from far away, but the principles of hajj, the teachings of hajj, the significance of hajj, the implications of hajj are ones of jihad, are ones of warfare, are ones of resisting taghut and oppression and, and transgression. When one renews his pact with Allah, his promise to Allah that we, he will uphold this deen, he is uh, in fact taking an oath to wage jihad against evil, against Satan, and against the symbols, not only the symbols, but the representatives of Satan on this earth. When one, when one stones a jamarat, he is resisting evil. He is making a physical gesture in this ritual that he will resist evil. So those who throw stones at al jamarat, which are, are also mere stones themselves or erections, they are mere erections. They do no one any harm. When one throw, throws 
these stones at these Jamarat and he is not capable of speaking out against communism or Zionism or crusading imperialism. What sort of person is this person? What sort of ignorant person is this person? When he throws these Jamarat and he's full of anger and he's full of spite and he's full of determination to resist the evil this Jamarat, these Jamarat represent, then he goes back to his country, he goes back to his home, he goes back to his village, he goes back to his office, he goes back wherever he goes back to, and he not only does not throw stones and resist evil, he takes part in assisting evil. This is brothers and sisters' ignorance. The Muslims have not known the essence of Hajj. They have not known the significance of Hajj for so long because those who have oppressed the, the Muslims, those who have usurped the authority of Islam, the political, the economic, and the social, have been very keen on keeping these implications of Hajj away from the Muslim minds and hearts. When Muslims go to Mecca and say death to international kufr, death to international communism, Zionism, and imperialism, they are denouncing a shaitan and his ways. And this is the spirit of Hajj. When you go and throw those stones at Al-Jamarat, you are denouncing this evil, represented by these Jamarat. But where is this evil if it is not Zionism and imperialism? If it is not these authoritative regimes in the Muslim Ummah, then where is evil? On the moon. Evil has representatives, brothers and sisters. And we do not only denounce or throw pebbles at, at for example, al Jamarat. We, we resist this evil wherever it may be, in whichever forms or in whichever ways it manifests itself. We resist this evil. This is the spirit of Hajj. When we go to Hajj and we circ circumambulate the Kaaba, we are making a pledge with Allah to uphold the teachings of Allah, to uphold the Quran, to do what we can to spread the word of Islam. This is the nature of Hajj, brothers and sisters. It is a political, economic, informational, cultural, educational nature. A Rasul alayhi salatu was salam in the farewell pilgrimage. He delineated, he explained many principles of the Islamic State. And in Hajj, these principles should be explained. In the farewell khutbah, farewell khutbah, a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam announced the inviolability of the rights of man in his person, in his property, and in his honor and dignity. A Rasul, in that famous historical speech in Al-Hajj, abolished usury forever among Muslims. He abolished the spirit of vendetta and personal justices where people take the law into their own hands. A Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke of the rights of women and how they should be treated. Why did he say these things? In Hajj, why did he deal with these 
these subjects because this is the nature of Hajj. It deals with the, it, it covers the entire gamut of the Muslim society, its inspirations, its problems, the solutions to these problems, what the Muslims confront, who the Muslims confront, and who, who confront the Muslims. All of these things are dealt with in Hajj. This is the nature of Hajj. It is not merely rituals. Hajj is an international institution whereby the entire Muslim Ummah is mobilized. It is mobilized to resist Tawood. It is mobilized to resist oppression. And when Hajj is mentioned, for example, how can one not remember Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa when both are inextricably connected? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawla. These are connected. And when we see Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa occupied, how can we not shout slogans against those occupiers who have taken it from the Muslims? How can we not shout slogans against those who are bombing and killing innocent men, women, and children in southern Lebanon, in Afghanistan? in Iran and Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, in Tunisia, all over the Islamic world. How can we not shout slogans against oppressive regimes, against those who wage war, against people who say, our Lord is Allah? This is the nature of Hajj. It is not merely rituals. It is what these rituals stand for that the Muslims must pay close attention to. It is the spirit of Hajj. It is the spirit of Tawheed. And all this entails, brothers and sisters, another lesson one knows in Hajj, and that is of sacrifice, of altruism, of selflessness. When Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam confronted the shirk of his days, he had to sacrifice. Ibrahim, he who re reconstructed Al-Kaaba, he who made the famous dua, Rabbana wab'at fihim rasoolan minhum, yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yuzakihim. This Ibrahim and his son Ismail and his wife Hajar are examples, are, are our examples of sacrifice and of jihad in the, in the cause of Allah regardless of the circumstances. And this is one of the lessons of Hajj. It is a lesson of sacrifice. Because Muslims, when they take this path, they will have to sacrifice. This is the nature of, of the path of Allah. It is fraught with sacrifices. It is fraught with displeasures. It is fraught with jihad. Fraught with jihad. This is the nature of Hajj, brothers and sisters. And when, when one says death to America, or death to Russia, or death to communism, it is no different than the Quranic ayah, Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab. Both are transgressors. Both are enemies to the Muslims. Both have evil designs and plots against Islam. So when one says in Al-Hajj, death to international arrogance, he is emulating the Qur'an and he is taking his cue from Surah Al-Lahab. Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab. Death to this kufr, death to this shirk. And if slogans against kufr, and if slogans against arrogance, and if slogans against communism, and Zionism, and imperialism, 
are against the Qur'an and all the ayat of the Qur'an which are denunciation of these evil phenomena are against the Qur'an and this, is, this cannot be, the Qur'an cannot contradict itself is the nature of Hajj, brothers and sisters, it is a nature of mobilizing the Muslim Ummah, of generating in the Muslims the spirit of Tawheed, the very essence of Islam, the very essence of Shahadatayn, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah this is the essence that Al-Hajj strives to instill or to regenerate in the hearts of those millions of people who go to Hajj every year. But unfortunately, those who have, who have control over Al-Haramayn, those who have control over that part of the Muslim Ummah, have been very diligent upon not disturbing their masters in Tel Aviv and in Washington and, and in Moscow. They do not want to disturb the status quo. They do not want the Muslims to go against those who rob them, against those who, who plunder their, we their wealth and their resources. They want the Muslims to remain in their deep, deep, deep artificial slumber while the enemies of Islam spread in Palestine and bombard and kill and strafe and murder and commit all sorts of genocide in Afghanistan and while they wage their war through their proxies in occupied Baghdad and Iraq. They do not want the Muslim masses to rise and say no, this is kufr, this is shirk, this is, a, is, this is against the book of Allah, it is against the teachings of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. No, they do not want this. They do not, they do not want to see the mobilization of the Muslim ummah. But alhamdulillah, ever since the victory, of the Islamic revolution in one part of the Muslim Ummah, in one region of the Muslim Ummah, the spirit of Hajj is again going back to what it ought to be, to what it was during the days of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the early Muslims, the spirit of Hajj, of Jihad, of awareness, of Tawheed, of unity of the Muslims is once again beginning to radiate during the season of Hajj when we see Muslims in the hundreds of thousands shouting slogans against those who have massacred the Muslims, against those who have attempted to distort the very basis of Islam. When we see this, we are encouraged and there is great hopes in our hearts that this spirit of Islam, the spirit of Tawheed, the spirit of Jihad and sacrifice, the spirit of resisting evil in whatever form evil manifests itself, the spirit will spread and spread and encompass the entire Islamic world and cause an international Islamic revolution that will demolish the thrones of tyranny and injustice and oppression. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم يا فوز المستغفرين استغفروه يغفر لكم Brothers and sisters, what is being renewed in 
Hajj is the spirit of Hajj. And the spirit of Hajj is one that brings the Muslims close together. The spirit of not only Hajj, but the spirit of Islam, the spirit of the Quran. These are being revived. Because Hajj is there, buildings are there, and the rituals are, are performed as they should. But the spirit, this is what is absent, and this is what is being revived. What do these symbols, what do these rituals mean? What do they stand for? What ought Muslims do? What ought Muslims think? What should be their feelings and, and determinations? How should their mentality be as they perform these rituals? Should it be one of seeking the aid of Allah and believing in, in His uh, assistance and help when they go and confront Kufr? Or should it be one of keeping away and being afraid of confronting this kufr? Should it be like the spirit of Ibrahim who despite the overwhelming odds demolished the idols and was sentenced to death and was thrown into the fire? Come what may, Ibrahim knew that this might happen to him, but despite this fact, he stood against this uh, nonsense, he stood against this kufr, he stood against this illogical mentality of his people who were worshipping idols and stones. He resisted this, knowing full well the circumstances that await him, knowing full well the punishment that m might be meted out to him by his people who held in high esteem these idols and these stones and these false ideas. But Ibrahim nevertheless, by himself, Ibrahim alone, one man amongst a people, resisted these people and was determined and resolved to announce the truth to the people. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the sacrifices, and that is exactly what he did. And Muslims, this is the spirit of Hajj, brothers and sisters. It is a spirit of resisting Tahut, of going forth for the cause of Allah, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the overwhelming odds, regardless of the torture, regardless of the sacrifices that might be entailed by doing so. This is the nature of Hajj. It is the nature of sacrifice. It is the nature of resisting Tahut. It is the nature of coming to the aid of Al-Haq, when Al-Haq is in straits and it is in dire circumstances. It is not coming to the aid of Al-Haq when Al-Haq is overwhelming. It is in these trying times that a person's nature, a person's uh, character shows. It is in times of difficulties and hardships. It is, it is in the time of sacrifices and adversity. This is when Muslims should come out with resolve as Ibrahim did, as Muhammad والسلام, did, as Al Imam Al Hussein did in Karbala. This is the nature of Islam. As a matter of fact, when Imam al Hussein left Mecca and Medina, he left during the Muslim of Al Hajj. Why? And he went to Karbala. Because one of the very basic basics of Islam was being violated. Al Hajj, which is a ritual which is a ritual or contains many rituals, signifies many things. And one of the things it signifies is upholding Islam. And Islam was being, at that very moment, undermined. The authority of Islam was usurped from its lawful people, those who were supposed to be in charge. And he went out, despite the odds, and he sacrificed not only himself, but the entire, his entire family and household. This is, brothers and sisters, the spirit 
of Islam, the spirit of Tawheed, the spirit of sacrifice that we have been taught, that we can see in Ibrahim and in the followers of Ibrahim from his days up until this very moment. This is the spirit of not only Al-Hajj, but Al-Hajj is a main event which radiates this. But this spirit exists also in Jumu'ah prayers. It exists in the, in the active masajid that have been revitalized by Islamic awareness. It exists in the Islamic teachings. It exists in the stances of the various Islamic scholars who regardless of the circumstances they faced, regardless of the torture, regardless of the executions, Nevertheless, they spoke the truth and they sacrificed what all they had, even their lives, to uphold the deen of Allah. This is the nature, brothers, is part of the nature of Hajj, sacrifice also. And it is the oppressed especially who benefit from this Hajj. It is those who have been tyrannized, those who have been suppressed, those who have been robbed of their of the fruits of their toil and of their sweat, those who have been killed because they spoke the truth, those who refused to be hypocrites and were jailed and tortured and exiled and banished. These people are the people who stand to benefit, benefit from Hajj, people who are living in their villages and are being bombarded by gunships and missiles and various bombs of the latest know-how. These are the people who will benefit and those who will not benefit are those who have castles and mansions and suck the blood of Muslims. The spirit of Hajj brothers and sisters is a spirit of jihad, of sacrifice, of tawheed, of renewing one's path with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the awareness of the Muslims. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them ulama that will take them to victory, insha'Allah, through following the teachings of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins, forgive us our mistakes, and forgive us our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us insight and understanding. And may He make our footsteps steadfast in the face of calamity and adversity. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna tiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa arzuqna ijtinaba wa la taj'alhum ملتبسا علينا وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق اللهم اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق اللهم اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا